Today, we're going to be looking at the mistakes I made when I started out printing and a few tips on how to avoid them. I've been printing for three months now and have made plenty of mistakes. So if you're someone who's looking into 3D printing, hopefully this video is quite helpful. First mistake, calibrating the printer's exposure. Basically, the mistake is not doing this. When you first get your printer, all you want to do is print some awesome models. And in the rush, we can forget to calibrate our settings properly, particularly dialing in those exposure settings. My first week of 3D printing was a painstaking process as I was getting fail after fail after fail. You can watch the video linked from the top right. A lot of this could have been avoided if I just had the patience, did more test prints and made sure I had the right exposure. The calibration tool I used to really dial in my exposure settings was the cones of calibration by table flip. I did the classic validation matrix that everyone does and also Amera Lab City Print, but I found them too subjective in trying to work out the final tweaks to my exposure settings. They were useful for getting like into the right ballpark, but when it came to the cones of calibration, it was really easy to fine tune those last bits. And with the help of Table Flip's Discord, I was able to lock in my exposure for the prints. I do now. I'll put the link in the description. And if, if anyone's curious, I'll put my exposure settings and resin in the description below. The second mistake is not calibrating your printer with its firmware or any software updates, just like video games, programs, etc. The release product gets updated over time. So double check your printer's firmware is up to date. For me, the Creality Hallet 1, um, there was a firmware update and this changed a lot of the interface options on the machine, as well as printing parameters I can use. Uh, check your printer's manufacturing website website to see if there's an update. For me, Creality gave the update on the USB that came with the printer, but I could also download the latest version online. Mistake number three, wanting to print fast. If you didn't know, resin prints can take a while. And so we might think to ourselves, this is taking so long. What if I just turn up the lift speed a bit and this can significantly lower your print time. As soon as you start adjusting these settings, you can see hours shave off that print time. But as we increase lift speed, we also increase the peel force as the print gets peeled off the fat. And this can cause damage to the print, particularly where there are overhangs or weak supports. I was speaking to a guy from Atlas and they do a lot of supports for 3D sculptors. And in this case, for me, it was one page rules. And I was just getting a bit of help from him in terms of working out why my prints failed. And he was talking about this dead zone with lift speeds between 50 and 180 millimeters per minute or roughly 0.8 millimeters to three millimeters per second. And he said, so in between that window, there's a chance for more failures. Okay, mistake number four, not enough resin in the vat. Now this might sound silly and it will never happen to you. And I thought so too, until it happened to me. I was printing off some Orc Jetpack Boys and it was coming to the end of the print and the resin was gone. I was literally up to their shoulders. Um, I could try sculpt the rest, like using green stuff or something like that. It's a lot of effort and time. So I ended up just reprinting the models, but that was a waste of resin. So put more resin than you think you need. Your vat has markers on what limits it can take. Um, obviously don't overfill it to that. And if you're doing a print that needs more resin than your vat can hold, make sure to set an alarm to remind yourself to top it up with resin so that doesn't happen. This, the last point leads to this one, which is wasting too much time trying to save misprints. When I was printing my Tyranids from One Page Rules, I had a lot of partial failures with either a leg or arm misprinting. And so I thought I'd just reprint the individual limb and attach it. However, to attach the limb to the rest of the model, it, the failure wasn't a clean break and needed some work with green stuff and cutting away bits to make it fit well. And for particularly for troop models, where there's like 10, 20 of them, in terms of time, you might just be better off reprinting the whole model itself and just attaching a few extra supports where it failed. You're going to have to balance up your time and your resin. And is it worth putting the effort into saving or are you better off just reprinting the model? Again, it's something that I've done though for larger models and put the extra time because it, it is a significant amount of resin. And one of the things I've done with particularly bigger models is if they can be printed in parts, print them in parts. So if there's a misprint, I just reprint one part and not a really large model. Don't know what number we're up to, but having your wash and cure station on the wrong setting. Now, this one's pretty quick, but my Anycubic wash and cure 2.0 has the wash setting and a cure setting. And there's been a few times, even today it happens to me that I have it set to wash when it's supposed to be set set to cure. Now the wash spins a lot faster than the cure and this causes the plate that they're on to spin really fast and fling the models out. Double check that your curing station is set to cure when you want to cure and not set to wash. Another mistake is not subscribing to Habes' Hobbies. 
No, seriously. Um, if you're enjoying the content, feel free to hit that like button. Or if you want to see more videos, you know, chuck us a subscribe. Um, and if there's any questions or comments, if I've got stuff right, awesome. If I, if you've got better tips or corrections, chuck them in the comments below. Another mistake, subscribing to too many Patreons or buying too many STL files. A month or two before getting my printer, I was already subscribing to Patreons of models I wanted to print or buying STLs that were on sale. They really play into the FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. It's like, oh, if I could buy this, it's like 50% off. I don't want to have to spend the full amount of money on it. However, to me, if you don't print the file, you've wasted your money. And as hobbyists, rather than a pile of shame, like, you know, or a sea of gray miniatures to paint, which is probably what we'll have after we print everything, everything we have these files of shame just folders upon folders of stls that we haven't got around to printing from now on i've only subscribed to one patreon which is puppets war they do marines tyranids and orcs each month so one unit of each and i'm building up an army of each of those and so i kind of like that if i see another patreon that i like i'll ask myself will i be printing it this month if it's something that i like oh no i'll print it in a couple of months i'll be like i'll just buy the files outright it might be 10 to 15 dollars more in the future but it's better that i know i'm going to print it right rather than buy it and it just sits there. Now the next three mistakes relate to build plate and placements of minis. And the first thing is overloading the build plate. With resin printing, we have the advantage that it doesn't matter how much material is on the build plate. What affects overall print time is the height of the print. It takes the same amount of time for us to print one model as it does for 10 models of the same height. Because of this, it can be so tempting to just fill the build plate chock-a-block, just trying to jam as many models as possible. It's almost like playing a game of Tetris, you know, rotating those pieces to get them to fit perfectly. However, as we do this, we can run into problems. One is the increase peel and suction force, which can lead to more failures. From my understanding, the peel force is the cured resin peeling off the bottom of the FEP as your build plate lifts up, and the suction force is the build plate pulling out the print out of the resin and so with a more viscous resin you have greater suction force just imagine trying to pull your hand out of honey versus trying to pull your hand out of water there's obviously a greater suction force with the honey and so there's a lot of science going on behind those forces and there was an interesting article that article that i read which i'll put the link into the description the other problem is just the more you fill the build plate the more resin kind of has to travel around things to flow back into the middle and get ready for the next layer to be printed so the best way to combat these two problems is a slower lift speed this will reduce the force acting on your print but also increasing the lift height as this will give the resin more time to flow back to the middle of the vat ready for the next layer to print both of these parameters will increase your overall print time but i feel like it's worth it to reduce your chances of failures next mistake is not varying your model's placement on your build plate when i first started printing i was doing a, quite a few test models and things like that and so i was only printing in the middle or to the right side for some reason of the build plate not sure why i did it on the right but that's just what happened and this caused more wear and tear to the fep in those areas i've talked about the fep already but it's the it's the it's the plastic sheet that covers the bottom of your that and so over time i was seeing more failures on the right side of my build plate slash fep and i realized it was a fep issue not a build plate issue as i rotated the vat 180 degrees and the failures start appearing on the left and so my solution was to obviously replace the fep but if you want to maximize the lifespan of your fep vary where you place the files use the corners the sides close to the edges sometimes and that can really increase the lifespan of your fep once you start to notice deep scratches or some wear or you start getting failures in one spot it might be time to replace your fab yeah keep your fab healthy vary your, where you place your models last mistake relating to build plate is not securing the build plate this sounds so dumb and you think it's not going to happen to you but the amount of times i've put the build plate back on the printer and not tighten the screw my goodness um loose build plates do affect the print like it's not too bad some of these models look okay um at least from my experience but the result is more failures or at least misaligned layers if you look at this print right now you can see the supports kind of just like i don't know there's like an earthquake happening when it's happened i'm surprised the prints like printed themselves i might just post a little note that says check build plate secure or something like that every time i print next mistake which is quite important for our health not taking safety seriously when printing we're using chemicals it's not safe to get on our skin or to breathe in directly particularly the resin i remember not using the mask on the first day that i was cleaning out prints and i had a 
headache for two to three hours. So like get a respirator, buy some nitrile gloves. The resin can burn your skin, particularly if you get it on you and you don't notice and then you go out into the sun or something. When the UV cures the resin, it's an exothermic reaction. So it produces heat. And so you don't want that. You want to wash it off. You want to have gloves on so it doesn't even end up on your skin. Wear safety glasses when you're removing supports because you can get uncured resin uh, flicking up at you and you don't want to get it in your eyes. But yeah, safety first. You're better off looking back on your 3D printing journey and be like, man, I was overcautious. That was silly of me. Then damn, I wish I took more responsibility for my safety and didn't have these injuries or anything like that. Another mistake was not branching out and trying other resins. Give other resins a go. Other colors, try transparent ones. You know what? Give um, water washable resin a go. Maybe that makes your cleaning process easier and it works well. Try eco resins, you know, just get an experience and an idea. If you have the money to do that and if getting into resin 3D printing is something that you're passionate about, yeah, try out other resins. And I think the biggest mistake, which no one's really gonna thing is thinking that it's going to be easy. Resin 3D printing, or at least for like hobby use, has come a long way, but it's still not plug and play. Thanks for tuning into this week's video. We'll catch you next week. I might be painting some pox walkers that I've printed.